Welcome back to Cooperative Conversations, Dark Souls 2. I've been summoned here to the world of Skelzor. Say hi. I'm excited. I'm there happy. you go. So, before we kill aforementioned tall fellow, uh, we are going to, each of us, go through an area that I neglected previously, and we're going to get Skelzor where he needs to go. So lead the way. Uh, I summoned you primarily to uh, clean up this area down here. Right. Oh. See, I was I was going the other way. Yes, yes, you were. That's fine. We can go the other way later. Sure did. Well, this mm, I should also mention yes. that uh, hitting a phantom is also bad for your weapon durability, so be careful. Truly, this is a terrifying and unforgiving video game. Its difficulty staggering and dizzying in its heights. Another misguided attempt to weaken co-op strats. I mean, what strategy requires me to hit you, really? <laughs> I just like two or more. Well, I get like yeah, two or more people ganging up on the same enemy. It's like, well, I don't know if, if your if your idea of nerfing a particular aspect of your game Trap. to make it more difficult is making it so that if a player does it, they don't get the ability to play the game anymore, that is, their weapon breaks. I don't know, maybe maybe rethink it. Maybe. I mean, I'm not saying, like, friendly fire was the answer, but the massively increased weapon durability hit is... Uh, it feels bad. spoken about hitting chests on camera yet? Uh, no, we haven't. We I did last time before change. we... I think it's a real bad change. Yeah, so, here, let's take this chest that's already been opened. Hit it. Hit it. And hit it. And hit it. Oh, I guess it doesn't work here. It's a shame. If you hit a chest uh, three times, it breaks, and whatever is in it gets turned into rubbish. Uh, which I suppose is an interesting way of like making your players more wary of the risk of mimics or booby traps. But also, it's is kind it? Of just, yeah, it's just it's not the right way to go about that. Like that that seems to me is just a totally arbitrary and incredibly poorly thought out change to make like something more difficult. I don't even know what. So the idea I would feel is to stop people from abusing just like slamming on a chest constantly if it's a mimic to like circumvent having to fight it which was a thing you could do in one if you had a if you had a decent weapon or good stats you could just hit a chest for days and if it turned out to be a mimic well it would be dead before it could do anything to you but if a chest is a mimic in this game it just has hit points and turns into a fightable creature true it doesn't <laughs> break it's it is, it is an are you uh, are you going the rest of the way through here? Oh, I suppose we should do that first, yes. Whee. So hitting a chest only hurts you if it's a real chest. If it's a, a mimic, everything's fine because you just take hit points off the mimic. a very strange system it, it doesn't seem to have any rational use well when you put it that way I, I can agree it doesn't seem like a smart change it seems like a change for the sake of a change 
It really does. I mean, if you, if you didn't know, if you were an ignorant whelp who didn't have the might of the internet behind you, you know, informing you, uh, you could go through this game thinking a lot of the chests just have rubbish in them. As one popular content creator did. Truly, he is a hero. His example will not be forgotten. There's no way to just like roll down there, is there? You're welcome. Thank you. So this little platform above all this, how do you get you gotta jump to that I guess? Oh yeah, you need to jump. I forget what it is. I I also forgot to jump to it on my playthrough. I'll, I'll check it out. For the sake of our, our, our dear and beloved viewers, I will find out. Uh, I appear to have. Oh no, you angered the turtle man. I did. Can you climb a ladder? I don't remember. Well, you're about to find out. I'm gonna go get that item. No, he can't. And so there. Oh, he's just gonna hit this, though. He's very angry. Yeah, jumping did not work. We're gonna have to deal with this turtle now. Is he supposed to be a turtle, or is that just his armor? Uh, it's just his armor. They're called ironclads. Whoops. There he goes. One handing my mace. Oh, so brawny. I guess that's why well, you're I'm not. Barber. I'm not is the thing, and that's why I did no damage to the ironclad. <laughs> yeah, I can't make that jump. So it's it's obnoxious. You have to like, yeah, you have to come at it at an angle. One final attempt with the wisdom of Barbary and driving me. It's me, Ian, your barber. Here to give you a haircut with this mace. So from like in from here or from here, I suppose it would be. Yeah. Let's get a running start and Nope. <laughs> actually jump, maybe. Yeah, I'm bad at jumping. Always have been. I suppose I could switch to the Dark Souls 2 style of jumping where it's on a separate plot. But I or you have like... to click this the movement stick and it feels awful? Yeah, I don't know why people say that's a good change, because I feel like it's not. I've heard people say that that's great, putting it on a separate button. And I'm like, are, are you are you a mutant? Because clicking the thumbstick is not what I want to do to jump. Solar man, soldier, and torch. There you go. Ah, so both things that I don't need. Do we want to talk about Ooh, the torches and the lighting? Right, the torch! As part of the... I mean, this is this is well known by a lot of people now, maybe not even people who play Souls. But, um... As part of the, um... Last minute changes... Uh, the very aggressively dark lighting scheme where areas would be nearly pitch black and you'd have to use a torch to, you know, for going a shield or a weapon uh, are gone. Yeah. Sometimes it's dark enough that you say to yourself, it'd be nice if I had a bit more light, and you pull out a torch to make your life easier. Sometimes. Not always. But it's never necessary. There's not even, there's not even the token, like, Tomb of the Giants. It's just, oh, sometimes it's a little spooky. Is it spooky? No. Oh! Well, he's oh, those, That Let's was move. not you that fell off. Let's move on. <laughs> oh, wait, there's an item back up here. Hold on. I need the shiny. I'm like a magpie. Yeah, see? Life gem. Homeward Bone, that was totally worth it. Yeah. So how do you feel about the life gem system so far? I actually, I kind of like it. Um, I do too. 
it's not uh it's not too there great, we go it's not too great a deviation from uh, the way healing worked in Dark Souls 1. I actually mm -hmm. like it better than being able to walk while sipping Estus in Dark Souls 3. Yeah. Uh, I feel like Dark Souls 3 should have had life gems. Because being able to walk while sipping Estus just made the Estus flask a million times more powerful. Um, whereas here, you actually have to make the decision. Do I want to use a resource that I know is renewable? Can I? Can, do I have the time? Or do I have to use something that is consumable and I will not get back? It's, it's good. That said, you can buy life gems oh, for yeah. oh, very yeah. cheap. Yes. I mean, like, that's that's just the classic Dark Souls 2. We had a good idea and then we did our best to make it a horrible idea. Yeah. Let's go uh, take care of that village. Yes. Give me a moment to switch off to a different weapon so that I don't break my axe. So this is an area that, um, oh. again, I neglected. Uh, do we want to do we want to climb this ominous ladder, or do we want to do the village first? Uh, yeah, let's let's try this out and see what happens. Okay. So I know what's coming because, like I said, we've already done these areas. So I apologize, but um, I assure you, up here on his own. Yeah, I assure you, the first time I encountered this, I was very surprised and very terrified. Very scary. Very intimidating. Yeah, I... Oh. That's not good. So what happens to you? If I'm cursed, well, you're summoned. You just remain summoned. Oh, well, cursing doesn't do anything. To, to me. Alright, he goes the other way. This guy's very difficult to fight with an, an upgraded weapon. He is. Uh, this is the pursuer. We don't we don't know that yet, but he's the pursuer. He casts pursuers. He does. He really does. Oh, yeah, still okay. watch out! Your I'm body is dying. Very strong and very smart. And it's me using my just over base, uh, but the, what's it called? Agility. Oh, I deserve that. Yeah, I could have avoided that. I was looking at my, uh, my stat sheet to learn what agility was called. <laughs> Because of course it's not just adaptability. Adaptability affects many things, including your agility, which is what determines your iframe count. He's pursuing. He's pursuing an awful lot, actually. Don't do that in public. Don't pursue in public. Please. For your health. You'll go blind. So the way this the way this guy is supposed to be fought is he's supposed to be your introduction to parrying, mm. which parrying I guess is why they give you a buckler early. I I don't know. I don't think this is a good second boss in the game. I have a big problem with Dark Souls 2's early game, from the the last giant being just kind of too obnoxious to have fun fighting at low level. Um. And then, like, the next boss being this guy. Teleports behind you. Nothing personnel, kid. I appreciate his 
little bundle of weapons on his back. Yeah. It's very adorable. So do we get anything extra for beating him here? I forget. I usually didn't bother fighting him because it's just really annoying. I got a ring of blades. I don't know if you get that from the or not. No, I, I didn't get anything. I got souls. Zombie nice. lady now, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I suppose we may as well uh, fight him on on my world as well. well. Well, we will do the actual fight so that the, the viewer at home can see how it's supposed to function. And well, yeah, but um, Ring of Blades is nice to have. Well, I think you get that from defeating him regularly. But in I fact, I'm almost certain you get that from just defeating him in a normal way. Because I remember I having forget. that. I remember having that oh, ah, the damn it. Oh, look. We'll look it up, because I feel like we should never miss an opportunity to kill each other with this thing. Yeah. See, it, it sucks that I had to delete the rest of the footage, Is because that was, that was pretty funny. Hey, just make sure you don't friendly fire me. Okay. Thunk. <laughs> now Skelzor. In my defense... It was a pretty good shot on my end. It would have been a clean kill. It would have been. It was, in fact, a clean kill. <laughs> on me. You killed me. Alright. Alright. I'll go take care of the other guys while you deal with them. What I'm doing now, dear viewer, is a mystery until we do it on Reckon's end. Yeah. I'll be perhaps a bona fide misery. Okay, I got it. If nothing else, I do commend the uh, period, period, accurate um, depiction of how a uh, like castle curtain wall was created, with ah, two good. thin layers of hewn stone and mortar. And then just filled up with junk. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. They junk that absorbs impacts. Yeah, of course, this texture isn't aligned properly in three distinct places, but eh, at least there's no Heineken beer can in it anymore. Is that a thing? There is thing? an area that used. Uh, so there's just like a lot of trash, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, here's some cartwheels, and here's, like, some old broken swords, and some junk, some furniture, and part of the texture they created, whatever stock photo they grabbed from wherever, had a crushed Heineken beer can as part of it. <laughs> so, until they patched that texture out, Heineken was canon in Dark Souls. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's pretty incredible, I gotta say. I like that. Alright. So come on back, we'll go fight the last giant. Yeah, I forget how to come on back, give me a moment. Gotta go back over to the house you first started at. Yep. Nope, you're how? on the wrong way. Am I? Come, come back. Yeah. Just cross this bridge. No. No. Turn around. No. Oh, that bridge, right. Not, okay, not the ladder. Okay. Yeah, not the ladder. The, the bridge you spent a long time looking directly in, at. Look, it blends in with the stone. Okay. Uh-huh. You're, you're going the wrong way again. I know. I know what I'm doing. There's a Do guy you? there. Yes, there's a guy there. And he needed to not be alive. Okay. Uh, all I see is a man trying to get further and further away from my soul memory. <laughs> I thought you wanted to co-op this game. Oh, no. Nope, wrong way. All oh, right, yeah. Elevator. <laughs> I'm very good Come on, Scal. Are you sure this isn't your first time through this? We're oh, making you know everything what? else it up. It might as well be. Okay, let's do it. Can you set off the pressure plate as a fan? Yes. I keep looking over this way. 
Oh, this is not there. Oh, we forgot to go down the other way, didn't we? Um, we did. Yeah. We did yeah. Yeah. Well, let's just go ahead and. Let me just oh yeah, do you want to get? Do you want to get Pate? Pate. See here. Is he? Oh, um, I got cursed, man. Oh right. Yeah. I could I could use an effigy. Do we want Pate? Nah. Okay, we can do it without. I, I Pate has a really convoluted quest line that I've only managed to see the end of once. And mainly because it's it's too much effort to go to. So this uh this Call of Duty jam jelly on my eyes effect. Yeah, I don't I don't know why they did it. They uh they took it out in the scholar, I believe. So uh this is the last retcon. Yeah. Because giants didn't look like this in Dark Souls 1. No. So, like, the reason I, I call this guy a very bad boss is because all of his attacks come from above where you'll be angling your camera to hit him. Which is... Which is not smart. No, it's, it's kind of a rookie design mistake. And it's like, oh, we'll just, you know, lock on up here and hit his legs down here, but then he moves upwards, and it's like, now I can't see anything. Because the way lock-on works. Oh, okay, here we go. Oh, he's metal. He just ripped off his arm, and he's gonna hit us with it. He's like a giant fiddler crab. <laughs> Look, it was good enough in the original footage, I'm gonna make the joke again, alright? <laughs> Uh, I deserve that. Not as much oh as I shit! Do. I didn't Ow. deserve that. That's that's rude. It's okay. It's okay. I'm a professional. Yeah. Goodbye. That's right. That's right. And now we get to enjoy this dead end. Yep, because. Turns out, the first area that you go to, technically not the first one you can go to, but the first one you're suggested to go to based on the enemies present and the items you can get and the fact that you get a merchant. The first area you're supposed to go to, um, doesn't go anywhere. You fight a boss and then you have to leave. So I went and got a slick new sword, I reckon. Oh yeah? So here's the part where you tell me that fire damage is not good in this game. Uh, no, I think it's fine. Um, oh, okay. I, yeah, well, I was gonna go get us the fire sword. <clears throat> Which I have, because I, I, I'm impatient. But let's go, let's show the viewer. Yeah. So this is what I'm talking about, where like even though you can go to Hyde's Tower of Flame first, the game doesn't want you to. It wants you to go to Force of the Fallen Giants. Because other than giving you Estus Flask shards and you know a variety of weapons fighting these really low-level crappy enemies, 
you get some other good items. You, know, you find Melentia, the, the merchant, and you find, very close to where we are right now, a fire sword, which is good to start the game with. It's a nice little leg up. And I just feel like not having the last giant lead anywhere is just kind of poor planning. So I don't particularly know why the enemies here are petrified. Because the, the enemy up ahead does not petrify you. In fact, it shoots fireballs at you. He's quite intimidating. And you can go and kill this guy. I forget what he guards, but it's not really worth it to kill him so early. Get Mainly you because you won't be able to. Ooh. That seemed close. Eh. I'm fine. And what's in the chest? But, oh, it's a fire longsword. And then you just, uh, leave. And you fight that guy later. And, uh, hey, yeah, I here's... can see an item drop as a phantom. Yeah, you get uh, life gems sometimes. And here's a slightly more reasonable barricade to getting into the bottom of the keep here. Where to next? Well, the giant, I suppose. Uh, not the giant. We have to do the village. Oh yes, right. You haven't you haven't spoken to that fellow. The mystery yes. shall be un unveiled. Yes. Wow, that guy didn't stand a chance. No. They never really do. Oh, I missed. So so very sad. I'll let you deal with him. Like a sippy. Alright. Hey, you dropped a life gem. Nice. Oh, no. Oop, that guy dropped something. It's probably a firebomb. Oh, hollow soldier armor. Wow. Ow. I could look like that, but I don't want to. Come, comrade. Let us raid the village and plunder its riches. I. Hey, there's a summon here. It's Nertutin. Ner Nertutin. He's wearing the wanderer stuff. I really wish. I really wish that even if they just used the. Oh, this isn't the right way. Even if they just used the Dark Souls 2 models, that they'd included all the original starting gear from Dark Souls 1, because I love the Wanderer set, and it's really good for fashion. And we all know that Dark Souls is really about family. And also <laughs> Much fashion. Much like... Much like the Fast and the Furious movies. Yeah, it's a movie about family at its core. That and Tyrese Gibson collecting a paycheck. Well, someone's got to get all that money. <clears throat> Ow. 
Please don't die. Yeah, please commence with the stopping. Oh god. You were right there and it blocked me and I almost died. I apologize. I had to do this cool jump. Not there. Over here. Are the um, carvings in this game? Uh, yes. Not for a much, much longer. Oh, disappointing. One of the things I really appreciated about Dark Souls 3 was the ability to get the uh, carvings very early on. Yeah. Oh, damn it, I have to go all the way back? That's right. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Dark Souls. You get the little ability to hustle up ladders there. It's pretty useful. It's... I really like it. It doesn't take any stamina, so there's no reason not to. Considering some of the uh, snaky to tier ladders in Dark Souls 3, really could have used that. Yeah, wouldn't have, wouldn't have. So you can in Dark Souls 3. It just doesn't do as much. Yeah, th this area is another one where it's just kind of like, and then you have to go back to the beginning. Oh well. Ah. I am experiencing that glorious uh, animation, uh, like distance loading, that they do to save on performance, where you look like a stick figure. Ah, they just reduce the frame rate at all of mm -hmm. 30 meters out. Allow me to lead the way. Well, you should I go. Shall venture forth and... You should go kill the uh, uh, the archer. Okay. Well, no, I want to venture forth into the cave. I'm sure nothing will go. Oh dear. All right, I'll go kill the archer. I mean, you're not going to surprise the... me. I I played this game before. Yes, it's a uh, map guy. It's oh, well, sorry. I was it's just him. daydreaming. I think. Car Carter, man, wouldn't Kay. that be a an on the nose like name for a cartographer? Hi, I'm, I'm Carter, the cartographer. He wants to create a map. Why cartography, you ask? Well, that's a good question. When I first came into this forsaken land, it was um, a, a, a curse. Uh, something about a curse. <laughs> How embarrassing! I seem to have lost my focus. But I do know one thing for certain. I have always been very fond of maps. I came to this land some time ago. Drangling, the lost kingdom. It sounded so romantic. Have you seen Majula? Oh, there's a rather spacious mansion there. I've made it my temporary home. Well, as something of a squatter, I'm afraid. Inside the mansion, I found a strange map, like none I'd ever seen. I believe that it's a map of Dranlake. Now I'm traveling the land to prove it. Yes, yes, that's it. That's why I came to the kingdom. Wait. No, that wasn't it. Then what? I don't seem to recall. Were you looking for that map? He just keeps talking. Wonderful. Then you're fascinated by maps, just like me. Shame on you. You should have told me before. Here, take this. A key to the mansion. 
Fine. What a joy to meet a kindred spirit out here. Incredible, really, isn't it? Such a map to be chiseled in stone. Oh, but one thing. I would not venture deep into the mansion. I can't be certain, but I've heard disturbing noises. Something about it feels wrong. Just be careful, please. I'll be back in Medulla soon. Perhaps we will meet again and discuss maps at our leisure. I'll be back. He has so much dialogue. So, well, he's got a lot to talk about. big, big thing in this game. You come to Drang Laic, you forget why you came to Drang Laic. Hey, Skell. Mm. Was there a boss in Dark Souls 1 that said, I don't even think you remember why you came here. You should just leave. Hmm. How did you get to this boss or the area they resided in? Were you... Pulled through a mysterious portal? Yeah, I seem to remember an abundance of fluff that I wanted to touch. I, um... No, it couldn't be. Now keep in mind, in the opening cutscene, you're standing at that lake, and you know, the, the ruined archway is... You know, it's ruined and there's no door, but in the water, you know, the reflection, a false image, shows the door. I do seem to remember someone in one of these Souls games talking about reflections of things. No. Maybe I'm just crazy. Would... Yeah, I don't think there's anything to go on here. We'll probably just have to keep playing the game. Oh, um, calling back to a previous topic, there is actually a Kingsfield reference in Dark Souls 1. Is there? Yeah. Calamite. And Seath. Oh. Oh, well, yes, Seath. I'm, Seath I'm aware of Seath. the Scaleless. Seath, the Great White Dragon of Kingsfield. Hmm. Look, let's, let's summon Pate. Um... But Calamite, I know I've talked to you about this, Calamite mm -hmm. is a, a black dragon with a single red eye in the middle of his Correct. forehead. Who was attracted to, or the source of, the, the blight, the abyss blight in Ulusil. In Kingsfield... I believe attracted... Yes. There was Gyra, the great black dragon with the single red eye in the middle of his forehead, who was the source of the Abyss Blight in Melanath. That does sound familiar. Now, I'm not saying that after uh, Prince, uh, King, Prince Forrester defeated Gyra on Melanath that he fled to Ulysseel and was pursued by Seath, but I'm saying it could happen. You know, Pate, I appreciate your assistance. I don't think a spear is going to do much to this dude's ankles. Uh, I mean, it might get caught in one of the chains and, like, trip him up a little bit. Ow. Have you ever been so mad that you ripped off your own arm? Uh, no, but I have been so mad I ripped off someone else's arm in a video game. Ah. Uh. Alright, good work everybody. Pate, you were there too. You make a good team. And uh, with that, this overlong episode is going to come to an end, so join us next time for See some new content.